So many people are just so hesitant or so discouraged from the way that dating sites uh, operate that I just love your your concept. So please uh, tell us what is Stitch, what it's all about, and how it's different than your typical online sites for dating. Did you push record? Thanks again for tuning in to Second Act TV. I'm happy to welcome Andrew Dowling back to our program today. Andrew, thanks for joining me again. Fantastic to be here as always, Silky. Okay. Well, if you missed our first segment, I will link to that, of course. Andrew is the founder of Stitch, an online community as well as, well, a, a, what would you call it, an in-person community? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the real world, which is a bit weird sometimes because it makes it seem like, well, is online not real? Uh, but yeah, in many ways, it's not really real. So yes, we are a community, uh, but we also have a, a web platform and an app that helps enable those connections. Well, and, and we'll explain all this. Uh, uh, basically, Andrew is the founder of this community that, that caters to finding companionship after 50 and i was really excited to find you when i did you know research we do obviously a lot of content on second act about dating and so many people are just so hesitant or so discouraged from the way that dating sites uh, operate that i just love your your concept so please uh, tell us what is stitch what it's all about and how it's different than your typical online sites for dating yeah well actually it's a great question where I, I, there's one, I think there's a video presentation on the site where there's one slide that says, we, we'd like to make it clear, Stitch is not an quote unquote online dating site. Um, because as you said, uh, when people get to our age and above, uh, well actually even younger people, online dating itself can be a somewhat dispiriting experience. And it's, it's very transactional, it's kind of like a marketplace. And what Stitch was founded to do was to improve people's lives and, to, and, and change the thinking around getting older and maybe being uh, looking for, you're missing something in your life because the reality is uh, many people, if they don't have someone to do something with, they just won't do it. So they miss out on enriching their lives through all these wonderful things that's available to us. And so Stitch is built about how you find companionship. And companionship is really broad. So we've got members on Stitch who are Yep, look, they're only looking for romance, and that's totally cool. But on the other end of the spectrum, we've got people who are only looking for friendship. We've got married couples uh, within the community. The reality is, in, in our age group, a lot of people fall into somewhere in between. So they might be on their own, and they're open to the idea of finding romance, but they don't want that to be the number one thing. Maybe they've tried dating before, and they realise it's, it's just it makes them feel terrible or, you know, they're constantly being judged or judging someone else. Um, they want to get out there and do something, but if they met the love of their life or the second love of their life, uh, you know, then they'd be happy to say yes. And we do get a bunch of marriages through Stitch, but we're trying to make it much more focused on, it doesn't matter what happens. If that happens, that's a great outcome, but everything you do in the community should be enjoyable, enriching and making your life better. Yeah, no, that's that's terrific. And it does, you know, for those who are looking for love again after 50, uh, it takes the pressure off. It's you're not there uh, to meet just for that purpose, you know, and, and we're, we're really a lot of us at this point are just looking for companionship and not the pressure of, you know, is this going to be a match or, you know, whatever. Um, Andrew, so so, okay, so so for viewers so that I understand, you enter the community via online, obviously. But then you have chapters all over the world where That's where, right. where now how how does that work? Explain to me how that works. Yeah, so again, it's the so Stitch is a combination of a bunch of things. Um, we obviously have members all over the world uh, who join, and because it's we have the app and the website, you are able to see people in your area, and if you want to connect with them one on one, you can. Um, but what we really try to steer people towards are the community part of Stitch first and foremost, because it's actually getting out there. In fact, the penny dropped for me in the early days of Stitch when we actually did, a couple got married, and um, the the lady said to me, I would never have clicked on his profile. Like, he was terrible, his profile was terrible. Like, he didn't know how to run himself, he just hadn't put much effort in. But we got talking in the community, and I realized, I really like this guy. 
And the flip side, he said, oh, yeah, I had a very strict idea of what the age group I was looking for. And then it turned out she was a little bit older. But anyway, they're married. Um, like, so it was just a great example of sometimes your preconceived notions of what you're looking for can really get in the way of actually finding someone right. Right. Uh, so the way Stitch uh, operates for the rest of the community, we have interest groups uh, in lots of areas, and they can be based on a location or particular topics. Uh, but the thing that actually really drives a community are events and activities. So our, unlike, I guess, most websites or um, online environments, our goal is to get people to do things in the real world. It's not about staying online, looking on profiles, sending lots of messages. It's get out there, have fun. So any member can suggest something they like to do. Uh, and so in the area, if you log in, you'll see, if we've got in, if you're in an active area where, um, of one of our communities, you'll see uh, lots and lots of ideas that people are organising and saying, hey, please come along. Um, they can organise themselves by groups. There's online discussions for those groups and so on. And so it's all around driving, um, you know, behaviours and activities that people want to do. Uh, in Sydney at the moment, I mean, I think we, this week we've probably had about 30 or 40 events and activities right across the city. And this is all driven by members. You brought up a couple of things I want to clarify to make sure, yeah. you know, I mean, I understood what you said because we've talked, but I, I, I want to review this to understand. So when you say in an active area, for example, well, what if I'm in an area that's not active? Uh, yeah. I want you to tell me how people can actually start that. And then I want to clarify, uh, you know, how or have you clarify what how is it different or is it different than, you know, organizations like Meet Meetup? It, you you yeah. have that in Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, you know, to me, it's it's that you know, meetup is 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 different activities and interests, but not necessarily you know in our age group age group focus. So I'll, I'll let you uh, address the, those two questions. Yeah, why don't, why don't I address that one first, and then I can talk to the um, how communities get started and how they how they grow. Um, so yeah, so there is an element of meetup to Stitch. I mean, meetup's a great. I think it's a great company. It's it's created a lot of things for people to do. The thing is. Um, a lot of people are using Meetup to achieve the goals of Stitch, but Meetup actually isn't specifically built around those goals. Okay. What we find, uh, for example, and there, there are Meetup specific groups uh, for particular ages, but they're, not, they're generic groups. Whereas, so uh, it was best articulated uh, to me by one of our members who said, yeah, I, I, I go to, she, for whatever reason, was really interested in physics. And that's a pretty... <laughs> unusual thing. She loves going to physics lectures. And she said, yeah, but I turn up with these, I go to these meetup groups and everyone's young. Everyone's, um, you know, or, or there's the professor up on stage or whatever. And I sit there on my own and I just, I just don't find, I want someone in my age group who also likes physics. So that's one example. But a better example is the fact that so our goal is to use the events activities to create really strong connections, strong relationships between people, because we've covered this in an earlier segment about the underlying reason behind what we're doing is this understanding about isolation. And one, if people aren't socially connected, it has a really negative impact on their lives. So we're really driven by that. And it's not just casual, I turned up at a meetup event and enriched my life. You actually have to build relationships and you do that by shared interest. Um, so what people are looking for is not a group that might be on one particular topic to join, like physics. It's I want to find like-minded companions. Mm -hmm. So Stitch is built around that. So within your group and the events and activities you do, we have a lot more focus on them um, connecting people, uh, allowing them to communicate. Uh, it is even, I mean, we've got a different pricing model. It's actually, you can be free and create events. You can't do that on Meetup. So there's a whole range of things there. Um, but it's really built around how do we, how do we take what's obviously attractive about Meetup, make it really focused about our age group because we've got a bunch of specific needs. How do we make it safe? Uh, because we've got this verification model um, to make people safer than, than exists on, on pretty much any other side. Um, and how do we do it in a way that, that really meets the needs of what our members are looking for? So hopefully that explains it. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and Meetup obviously is, is a great organization, but it's just not age-focused like what you're doing here. How, how then can we get involved, especially if there isn't a chapter you know, in, in our area? Yeah, so the great news is there are members, I, I guarantee you, we've got, I mean, you're in Los Angeles, right? So we've got 
thousands of members there already. Um, so it doesn't matter almost where you are, you can join in and you will be able to see members in your area you can reach out to. But we've got a program that helps four people in new areas um, that are actually are interested in not just being part of something, but also helping create the thing that they, they really like. Uh, and we provide, so it's, it's, a, it's a volunteer community champion program where we reward people if they're willing to take that first step. Because what we find, you know, sometimes it's just that first initial step. It, it, you know, the Sydney community, we started with, it was a coffee for six people, but we just did it every month and it's just grown. We've got tens of thousands of people and all these crazy number of events. It's, it's really astonishing. But people take a, a while and sometimes it just needs that first person to say, you know what, I, I'm willing to catch up for coffee. We've got this great group in Sacramento who did exactly that. And we didn't know, but they just it just starts to snowball. So the first thing to do is, sign up uh, and then the system will actually tell you what's going on and things like that and you see if there's things in your area but there's also you get a lot of direct connection to me and the stitch team and we put a lot of work into community building um, so helping our members uh, even if they've just got some ideas for their area uh, we can help out and and then help with some of the growing of that community in, in the area yeah I was just gonna uh, say we we have I mean obviously I'm I'm in the LA area but we have viewers all over the United States and yeah. and I did check you know where, where you are you are heavily concentrated and there's a lot of areas that obviously tons of areas that could be grown I really want to encourage people that oh gosh I want to do this you know how how can will they get support from you um, do, yeah. do they have to worry about oh my gosh you know nobody He's gonna uh, call. You know that. Am I gonna get rejected? <laughs> Rejection yes. is a big issue in you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the great thing is, so what we do, um, Stitch is like this big family, uh, and and it's one of the beauties really of it. Uh, everyone who joins has this positive mindset about improving their lives, but also doing it for other people. And so we put those members in touch with other community members around the world who offer ideas and support and suggestions. And some of them, the best stories we've got are about people who then form these friendships, even with people in different cities, uh, as they've got the community up and running. We've recently um, been growing our communities in places like Phoenix and Chicago, and we're uh, coming into the new year, I think we've got about five or six different cities that we're going to be putting extra attention to. But we are very responsive to people who will say, well, in my area, what can you can you help out? And we, we, we're doing that as well. And it makes them feel like that step alone is actually quite a nice feeling to go, you know, I've got these friends. So we, we get people who travel to Australia or whenever I travel, um, I'm in the US a lot. And they'll say, you know, I can I go to events in other cities as well. And it's it's like I've joined this extended family. Um, and when I'm traveling, I get treated even better than when I'm I'm, I'm almost like a, a um, special guest star. Sort of <laughs> well, yeah, you're the founder of Stitch. <laughs> no, I'm talking about our members. So I was in New York and I went along to a New York event um, that one of our members in Brooklyn had set up. And there was a member from... Um, from Portland there, and there was one from uh, from a very small town in country Victoria in Australia who was traveling to see her granddaughter. And she just thought, oh, I'll just check out. And anyway, they got connected, and the next two days, they took the Australian member around to, to kind of treat her like a guest in their own hometown. So, no, it's not just me, it's, it's actually other members as well. It's really, really cool. <laughs> well, no, it's, I think it's a fabulous concept. Uh, we, we're running out of time here on this segment. Um, I'm going to link, obviously, to your site. Uh, anybody that wants to get in touch with you directly, uh, become a member, you be a free member. There's a full membership, which is, uh, I mean, it's really not that much. How much is it? I'd... Yeah, so full membership, $60 a year. Yeah. Uh, but if you're getting a community started in your area, then then it's free, and it's you know it's free to come to events and activities. So what so, I, I, no, we didn't talk about fees or anything, and th which really it, it's it's nothing not much to talk about with <laughs> with with your organization. It's just a terrific concept, and it does it, it can give somebody purpose by coming involved and 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 helping you you know grow this organization. Uh, Andrew, before we sign off, any closing words? Uh, look, no, I mean, I think you've covered it really well. We'd, we'd love anyone who listens to this to feel like Stitch is welcoming to them, something they can be part of. Sometimes it takes a while. We've had people who sign up and then they take a couple of years before they think they're really ready. 
but I guarantee you, know, it's it's there for you no matter what stage of life. And um, and we've got members who've kind of joined and then they do something, they come back. Uh, we're we're really proud of the community, and we'd love to see as many people kind of join and be part of basically having a great time together. Well, I'm 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 very you know happy about this. I want to help you get the word out because uh, again, as I've said previously, you've really taken a, away lots of the objections, the barriers to entry that so many of the dating sites have you know have have posed for people trying to find companionship, love, whatever. So, with that said, I hope to see you soon again on another episode of Second Act TV. See you soon. Thank you very much. For more information on living your life to the fullest after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Here's the button. See you next time.